What are shells, subshells, and orbitals? Well, we know that electrons are arranged in shells. So we have these electrons that are arranged in shells. And they're usually represented by the principal quantum number, n, which could be anywhere between, let's say, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So where n stands for the principal quantum number, or the number of shell. Principal quantum number, which also gives us the shell number. Right, so we know that electrons are arranged in shells. But in each shell, well, we can say each shell consists of a number of subshells. So if you consider the shell as a residential building, the subshells are like the individual flats or apartments. And interestingly, it's pretty easy to remember because the number of shells and subshells, they're always equal. Let's say uh, I have my n, this is the number of my shell, and these are my subshells. So when my shell number equals to 1, there's only one subshell, which is called 1s. Let's say the shell number equals to 2. So there are two subshells, 2s and 2p. And if I say the third shell, n equals to 3, has three subshells, 3s, 3p, and 3d. And if I say n equals 4, if my shell number is 4, there are four subshells, 4s, 4p, 4d, and 4f. Right? So th these are the subdivisions within the shell. So how did chemists or physicists know that these things exist, the subshells exist? Well, they took a look at the successive ionization energy data, which you'll be learning really soon. So that data actually confirmed the presence of these subshells. Right, so the shell number equals to subshells. If I have one shell, there is one subshell. If I have two shells, there are two subshells, and so on and so forth. Now let's try to understand a little bit more about um, what these subshells are. What are these SPDF subshells? So let me write down here. So if I have my subshell S, So let's say my subshell S and these subshells are in turn divided into something called as orbitals. So if I say subshell S subshell, it's made of one orbital. And the maximum number of electrons that can be found in each orbital is basically two electrons. So S subshell is made of just one orbital, which is actually can accommodate up to two electrons. Now if you say P subshell, P subshell is divided into three orbitals. One, two. So we said each orbital can accommodate up to two electrons. So since P subshell has three orbitals, so that's two times three, it can accommodate up to six electrons. So if you're wondering what orbitals are, orbitals are basically mathematical function. To be specific, they're trigonometric functions. They're basically a volume of space in an atom where the probability of finding, ele finding an electron is maximum. So they basically, they, you can never observe these, nor you can actually take a look at them because uh, they're simply mathematical function designed by scientists to explain the arrangement of electrons. So they don't really exist. You cannot observe them in an atom. But there is data to prove, uh, ionization energy data that is actually uh, can be used to prove the existence of these subshells and orbitals. So if I have my D subshell, it's actually made of five orbitals. 
and we said each orbital can accommodate up to two electrons. So if each orbital can accommodate up to two electrons, so that'd be two times five. So this D subshell can accommodate ten electrons. Similarly, if I have my F subshell, let's see, my F subshell can basically can be written as let me write down here my F subshell is actually divided into seven orbitals one two three four five six seven so seven times two that's fourteen electrons right so to summarize we said at the beginning of this video that electrons are usually arranged in shells one two three four where n equals to the principal quantum number or simply the number of shell and each shell is further divided into subshells like S, P, D, and F and the number of shells and subshells they're equal and each subshell is in turn divided into orbitals. Orbitals are basically volumes of space in an atom where the probability of finding an electron is maximum and each orbital can accommodate up to a certain number of electrons and these electrons are basically the capacity of these orbitals. So if you want to actually show the electrons in these orbitals you can show using these arrow marks so the two electrons can be shown using an upward and downward arrow. Well that's th that basically represents the spin of the electron so here I can represent in this fashion. So the six electrons can be arranged in three orbitals with opposite spin. The electrons uh, like tiny magnets they have opposite spin. So similarly I can say well to that four, six, eight and ten. Similarly these fourteen electrons can be shown using these upward and downward arrow marks in this fashion. All right. So these are basically, you can call these orbital diagrams. In the next video, we'll learn more about this. That's 14 electrons.